Your Excellency, we thank you very much for the invitation we got from you. And uh, since yesterday, we are learning a lot. We are learning a lot yesterday, we were able to meet the Right Honorable Speaker and the uh, members of Parliament. We were able to discuss even individually with uh, some people from here. So we learned very, very many things from Southern Sudan. Your Excellency, I present you the greetings from the Speaker of East African Civil Assembly. He would like to come himself leading this delegation, but due to unavoidable circumstances and uh, other commitments which are important also, he was unable to come himself. But he sent his greetings to you and to the people of Southern Sudan, and he supports the CPA, and he supports also the referendum <coughs> to be held on uh, 9th January next year. Before that, of course, you know, the people who are here, some of you are here in the last visit, and most, uh, or some of you have been with us in Southern Sudan during the war. Uh, somebody to my left here have been living to our village, and all those people have been, have been there. I, I would like, you know, all of you to visit different parts of Southern Sudan. As you have seen in Jongole, in Bor, Nothing has been done. And if you can ask, you know, why are people in Southern Sudan are always very angry and fighting the government in the north? You can see from uh, what has been done on the ground. Nothing has been done. Juba was not like this when we came in in 2005. And so, if this is now the state of Juba, which is said to be the capital of, uh, of Southern Sudan, if it is in this shape, what do you think is in Dabu? Bor is one example that you have seen. If you were to go to Arab, where I come from, that is state I come from, you would not even like it. Uh, you would not understand why was it why is why is it called a state? No infrastructure, there is nothing. Bor is even better than than Warab, uh, if you were to go there. And so southerners did not fight because they just like the war, they just they like to fight. No. <coughs> they were fighting because they have really been denied everything and they were the most marginalized people. There are other areas in the north that are even worse off than the south. But because they have no mentality of the southerners. Southerners, once they are angry, they resort to violence. Mm -hmm. And this is what the people in Khartoum understand. When you become violent, they will come to you tomorrow to come and talk. I don't know why. Why are you? Why, why are you so angry? What is? What is it? <laughs> this is why Southern Sudanese gain this autonomy that they are now living in today. The other people in the north, nobody considered that. So this is our situation. I'm not advocating for violence in the Sudan. Uh, this is our situation that we have been living in. We are born in this crisis, and then we now have grown old in this crisis. Yeah. Thank you. At the invitation on the Southern Sudan, of the Southern Sudanese Forum for Referendum, the Right Honorable Speaker for the East African Reserve Assembly appointed a fighting mission to observe the state of preparedness of the people of Southern Sudan in the forthcoming referendum due to take place on January 9, 2010. The mission arrived in Juba on 10th December 2010 and will depart today, December 12, 2010. The mission is led by myself, Chairperson of the Regional Affairs and Conflicts Edition, and member of East African Jeff Assembly. Other members of the mission are Honorable Yves Sabimana, Honorable Frederick Ngezeboro, Honorable Manasin Zogonimha, Honorable Georgette Nivitanga, 
Honorable Pierre Damien Abumuremi, Honorable Dr. Amani Kaburu, Honorable Dr. FL Masha, Honorable Kate Kamba, Honorable Sara Bonaya, Honorable Christopher Nakuleo, Honorable Augustin Lotodo, Honorable Mike Sebalu, Honorable Major General Mugisha Muntu, Honorable Margaret Ziwa, Honorable Dora Kanabaita Biamukama, Honorable Ruben Oyondi, Honorable Leons Naruagie, Honorable Jacqueline Mongaire, Honorable Glaxon Karan, and the staff, Mr. Charles Kadonya and Mr. Mokhtar Abdul Boliao. The Yala fact finding mission has the following objectives. One, to appraise itself of the state of preparedness of the people of the Southern Sudan situation on the ground and the arrangements in place for the forthcoming referendum. Two, to create awareness among its members and East African community partner states about the status of implementation of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement. And three, to show solidarity and collaboration with the people of Southern Sudan as the Comprehensive Peace Agreement is being implemented. During the two-day mission, the delegation observed and witnessed the following. Impressive developments that have taken and still taking place since 2005 when the Comprehensive Peace Agreement was signed. We congratulate the government of Southern Sudan on these initiatives and have confidence that more will be achieved in the near future. Great social, cultural, economic and touristic potentials existing in Southern Sudan are known to many East Africans. Sustain political dialogue to bring all political actors together and promote unity for all Southern Sudan people and continuation of post-conflict recovery and development that Southern Sudan is experiencing in line with the Comprehensive Peace Agreement 2005. Generally, a relatively calm environment prevails despite reports of some isolated instances of bombing in the western and northern Bahr el Ghazal regions. High level of enthusiasm for the referendum is as evidenced by high voter registration statistics of 2.7 million people and the reception campaign rally attended by the mission at the University of Juba was largely peaceful. Extensive coverage of the electoral process by both public and private local media as well as regional and international ones. The mission has observed that there exists an atmosphere of tension and suspicion between Khartoum and Juba. In spite of the initial challenge, the mission is optimistic that the referendum will be conducted on a free, fair and transparent manner to enable the Southern Sudanese people to determine their own destiny. In light of this atmosphere, we call upon the African Union, the United Nations, and the international community at large to ensure that this tension does not disrupt the referendum process. The East African community shall recognize and respect the outcome of the referendum and is ready to continue supporting the people of Southern Sudan in their quest for determination of their destiny come January 9, 2011. The cultural and historical ties remain strongly knitted. What happens in Southern Sudan impacts on the East African community. Done this day of 12th December 2010 at Juba. Thank you.